Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a delicious deck, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Damilich, the 4-mana 4 4-3 4 Skeleton Wizard from Forgotten Realms, costs a blue mana less to cast for each instant and sorcery spell we've cast this turn, and whenever Damilich attacks, we exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard, we copy it and we may cast the copy, so we still have to pay its mana cost, and then we can even cast a Damilich from our graveyard by exiling 4 instant and or sorcery cards from our graveyard in addition to paying its other costs. So the blue mana discount still applies when casting Damilich out of our graveyard, and given how many cheap cantrips we have in the deck, we can often cast Demilich at a very low cost, sometimes even for free, and getting to cast Demilich for free out of the graveyard can set up some very explosive turns. And then the other main win condition beside Demilich are the four copies of Delver of Secrets. The 1 mana 1 1 human wizard says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card, and if an instant or sorcery is revealed, we get to transform Delver of Secrets into Insectile Aberration, a 3 2 flyer. So that can very quickly start pressuring the opponent's life total. And then we've got a very high instant and sorcery count in this deck to make sure the Delver transforms right away and to make sure we can keep fueling the Demilich. And that's because we only have 16 basic islands as our mana base, as well as 4 copies of Seagate Restoration, which counts as a sorcery but can be played as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life as well as 4 copies of Drory Disruption, 2 mana counter spell, countering a spell unless the opponent pays 1, otherwise a tapped land, as well as 2 copies of Saloon Division, which can also be played as a tapped land, or as a 3 mana instant, letting us look at the top 6 card of our library, we can reveal an instant or sorcery from among them and put it into our hand. So we still have a sufficient number of lands, but also very high instant and sorcery count, which is important for the deck to function. And another card that's a win condition that benefits from having lots of instants and sorceries is Serpentine Curve. The 4 mana sorcery creates a 0 0 green and blue fractal creature token. Then we put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is 1 plus the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. So even if we exile a bunch of cards with Demilich, they will still count towards making a bigger Serpentine Curve. And then Demilich can even replay Serpentine Curve out of our graveyard, giving us another big fractal. And then the rest of our deck has a little bit of interaction, and then plenty of card draw effects to make sure we can find our Demilich consistently, and then have enough fuel in our graveyard to recast it, and to have plenty of spells to get value from as well. So at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Consider. Let's just look at the top card of our library, we may put it into our graveyard and then we draw a card. So a great way to fuel our graveyard for Serpentine Curve and Demilich, gives us a bit of card selection. Now we don't often want to cast Consider on turn 1, since it's such a great way to enable a cheaper Demilich, we'll often wait until turn 4 to fire these off, to potentially cast the Demilich for free. Then we've got our Delver, as well as the full playset of Fading Hope as a nice bounce effect, returning target creature to its owner's hand. If its mana value was 3 or less, we also get to scry 1, so strictly better on summon, especially nice in combination with Damilich as a way to get rid of any blockers and to keep the opponent off balance. Then we've got Otherworldly Gaze, an instant letting us look at the top 3 cards of our library. We can put any number of them into our graveyard and the rest back on top of our library in any order, and we can also flash it back for 2 mana. So this can help us set up a transformation on Delver of Secrets by putting an instant or sorcery back on top. Sometimes we just want to put random cantrips into our graveyard to fuel Damilich to make it easier to replay out of the graveyard and to keep growing the Serpentine Curve. And the same applies to Curate, a 2 mana instant. Looking at the top 2 cards of our library, we can put any number of them into our graveyard and the rest back on top and then we draw a card. And then Strategic Planning, a Sorcery Speed cantrip. Looking at the top 3 cards of our library, putting one of them into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. So we're very good at churning through the deck, putting lots of instants and sorceries in our graveyard to keep our Demilich fueled and to make a bigger Serpentine Curve. And then at 3 mana, besides Saloon Division, we also have 2 copies of Divide by Zero, returning target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand. So this can act as a counter spell, and then later we can also use it as a bounce spell out of our graveyard thanks to Damilich, making it much better than a classic counter spell. 
And then we can also learn, meaning we can grab one of our sideboard lessons, including a mercurial transformation, environmental sciences, teachings, which is also a great combo with bounce effects as that'll put more cards in the opponent's hand, expanded anatomy as a pump spell, introduction to prophecy, introduction to annihilation as removal, and finally mascot exhibition, all cards we can also potentially replay a second time thanks to our damage. And then last but not least, we've got two copies of Tempted by the Auric as a way to gain control of up to one target creature or Planeswalker the opponent controls with mana value 3 or less, so it can also potentially be a win condition and a removal spell all in one. Then Seagate Restoration we're not often going to cast for 7 mana, mainly here as a land that also happens to be a sorcery, and then our 16 basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn one Delver, we can gaze to potentially set up the transformation. And I could even put a stop on my upkeep to cast gaze and make it more likely to transform, even if it's a bit mana inefficient. Alright, so I want to put everything but one in my graveyard. And at that point, I guess curate might be the best draw, or maybe jewelry disruption. Although then our opponent will know about the Jory Disruption. But I can cast a Curate in the same turn. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then hit for three. Could also just play this tapped right now. Sure. Okay, I'll hold the consider until turn 4, and then for now, planning over curates. And Demolich is a nice one to either put in hand or put in the graveyard to then cast for free. And then maybe keep the consider. So next turn I'll be able to play Demolich for almost nothing. Brutal Cathar gonna exile my Delver, sure. Alright, time to consider. And Fading Hope, I guess I wouldn't mind drawing. And then I wanna try to put another Damage in the graveyard or draw it. So this one will draw. Oof, another one. I guess I'll draw it. Fading Hope. And then... Island we can put on the bottom. Cast a Demilich. Get rid of cards we're not gonna cast. Counter spells are part of it. And then consider... So something like this seems fine. And have two more. All right, that was a good turn, I would say. Hope there's no sweeper. Another brutal Cathar, that's fine. We'll be able to bounce that right away. And uh, maybe should have flashed back a gaze, but I think we'll be just fine here. So let's attack. And then I can Fading Hope as well as Maybe Silundi Vision go looking for a counter spell as this digs the deepest. And we did find Jory Disruption. Serpentine Curve also looking good as a way to recover from a sweeper. And I guess given that I want to cast Fading Hope, I wouldn't have the mana to cast Disruption anyway. So let's take the Serpentine Curve. And then just uh, bounce the Cathar. So I'm not too concerned, but I could have played in such a way that I had Jory Disruption available. Could have also kept my 
gaze on top to transform Delver, but if our opponent doesn't have a board wipe, they're dead anyway, so transforming Delver is not gonna matter too much. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one Delver, and then both Consider and Gaze are gonna help me set up a turn for Demilich that we can play for pretty cheap. Turn one Fireblade Charger. Luckily, transformed our Delver right away. And we'll hit for three. And then I don't think I do anything. Could have also decided to cast a Gaze on Upkeep to make it more likely to transform my Delver. Sadly, Frostbite takes it out. And a Javelin here, so opponent is on Monored Goblins. So if I cast all my cantrips next turn, I could potentially play multiple copies of Demilich for free. Which is why I'm waiting here. Take two. Alright, so we've got the fourth land, so finding another one mana cantrip and an additional copy of Demilich is going to be key. I guess I can gaze first... And then another considers fine. And then I've got one more shot at finding a demi lich here with the last consider. And we did, awesome. So I can draw it or I can put it in the graveyard. Uh, I guess I'll put it in the graveyard and then cast it from there. And then get rid of Restoration, Disruption, and two Considers. Alright, there we go. Double Demilich on turn four. And we've got some cantrips we can replay. Interesting attack, probably implies they have, you see, a pair of Goblins. Or another Frostbite, although that could have just killed Demilich. So, could block Javelinier, force them to cast it, or at that point just block the uh, equipped token. And then I'll still have another Demilich, plus one I could potentially replay out of the graveyard. Sure. Alright, so I can attack, replay... Consider, perhaps. And then I'll still need to put some additional cards in my graveyard. I could start with Curate as well. And then... Kind of have to put Serpentine Curve in my graveyard if I want to play another Demilich. So I could graveyard both. And then... Let's see here... Yeah, let's attack. I do want to get value from my Demilich. So let's cast Consider. And then I can still play a 2 mana Demilich. And we'll put that in the graveyard. That way I can keep the Serpentine Curve. Fading Hope also excellent. So now I could bounce one of the opponent's creatures and play one mana Demilich instead. They both have haste if they equip the Morning Stars, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay. And then we'll keep Serpentine Curve, and it's probably Fading Hope, so yeah, this looks good. And how big is the token going to be? 12-12. So our opponent's got an uphill battle. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, the Demilich is just too much for them to handle. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a uh, reasonable hand, I guess. Double Delver. Double Curve is going to take a while to make it bigger, but hopefully Double Delver has done some work in the meantime. No transformation just yet. And then, given that I have Double Serpentine Curve in hand, I'm tempted to fire off the Consider to start fueling my graveyard as opposed to keeping it for Demilich, if that makes sense. And Disruption. I don't mind drawing against a blue deck. Sure. And reveal another one. So now I'll probably play one tapped. As opposed to keeping up double disruption, which is also fair with double delver. Having double disruption up is going to be pretty tough to beat. So we could just uh, rely on the counter spells and just forego casting Serpentine Curve. Our opponent knows about disruption, but that doesn't make it any easier. And then I could main phase Curate to try and hit a land. Could play a Disruption Tapped. I guess if I play Disruption Tapped, they might not play around a second one. Like a Meat Hook Massacre for two would be effective. If our opponent does nothing, I think I still play the Curate as opposed to keeping up Disruption. If they fire off like a four mana card draw spell, that's fine by me. And then probably put both in the graveyard at this point. Okay. So hit for six. Not sure what they're planning here. Right, divide by zero can pay for disruption. That's fine. And then I'll play a Serpentine Curve, I think. Plus I could play another Delver. Could get punished by, I guess, like a Shadow's Verdict, which is pretty narrow. Alright, so let's see how our aggressive Delver of Secrets starts. Pays off. Sciences go up to 6, and our opponent explodes. Foretold card, let me guess, Alrun's Epiphany. Let's have a look here. Nope, I saw it coming, so Counterspell also quite poor when facing the double Delver of Secrets start. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Think I'll hang on to Gaze and Consider until turn 4, as usual. And try to set up double Demilich. Turn 1 Lunark Veteran, so either a life gain deck or... Could be... A human's deck. And green whites with an innkeeper, so it looks more like life gain than humans. Which could be a bit of a challenge. If they can play a creature that picks up counters over time. Well, we've got double gaze plus consider, so we're quite likely to find a second demilich. There's a Righteous Valkyrie, not what we wanted to see. Take two. And then is there any merit to casting Gaze on upkeep? Probably not. Alright, let's go digging. Probably gonna put everything in my graveyard. Yep. Another Demi-Lich? Oh yes. Can we cast a triple Demi-Lich on turn 4? Serpentine Curve also looking good here. And then we'll put that in the graveyard as well. Alright, and a 1. And a 2.
And a three. And then we'll keep Fading Hope and maybe one of the more expensive cantrips, Strategic Planning. Although I want to play Curve next turn, so I guess going for Fading Hope and like uh, Consider maybe could be fine. But bouncing the Valkyrie is going to be key. There's Hallowed Priest, opponent all the way up to 28, and another Valkyrie. Yikes. Well, we had a nice turn 4, but our opponents had to go and one-up us. So I'm taking 16 down to 1. Yeah, uh, sure. I don't think this Serpentine Curve is going to be enough. Can attack, consider, Fading Hope. But uh, yeah, we're just super dead here. Alright, well, that was cool. Good to see both decks with their nut draw, pretty much. Doesn't really matter what we bounce. Alright, GG's. to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand, got our two win conditions. And then probably gonna hang on to Gaze, although given my lack of other cheap instants and sorceries, I might just play it on Turn 2 in my upkeep. Try and transform Delver right away. Yeah, especially against green-white, they're not gonna have a ton of early removal for Delver. Okay, so... I can Graveyard both of these and then keep Divide by zero that I get to keep up turn 3. And then I'll play a Tapped Restoration. Let's say our opponent played a turn 1 Mountain or Snow Covered Mountain, then they could easily have a Frostbite, which makes it less appealing to try and transform Delver right away. But our opponent's a Green White Landfall deck. Root Grazer is pretty scary, but I don't think I want to use my Divide by Zero on it right now. So I could hang on to this. Although the real power plays from the green-white deck happen turn 5. So maybe I can afford to not play it and instead go Delver, Flashback, Gaze. And try and get double Delver going here. And then have Divide by Zero up by the time they could Storm the Festival or play Renan 7. Although tempted by the Auric, a nice answer to the token. Opponent hits us for two. And it's going to be a four drop. Uh, Yasharn, fair enough. So, I would like to keep the lands, but I also want to transform Delver, so probably put Curate on top. Don't think Disruption's going to be all that amazing at this point, since my opponent has a lot of mana to work with. So, Graveyard the Disruption, keep Curate on top with the land afterwards. Sure.
And the reason I don't want to play Demi Lich is that I really want to prevent the opponent from resolving their spell with Divide by Zero. Because a resolved uh, Renan 7, for instance, is a problem even if we can bounce the Planeswalker afterwards. Borrowed time. Yeah, I think I just counter that, make them replay it, which they can thanks to the Root Grazer. And then they'll be at 5. And then I can play my Demilich. And what do I want to learn for? Teachings, perhaps? Although I'm not confident that my hand's going to be empty since my opponent gets to put lands in play. Could also steal the Root Grazer here. But keeping this for a run on 7 token might be worth it. And then just attack, play Demilich. And there's Storm the Festival, the scary six mana sorcery. Find Scute Swarm plus a Lance, so the Delver is still our main win condition here. As the Swarm is going to make it difficult for Demilich to connect. Could also bounce the Borrow Time to get our Delver back. But then it still has to transform. Which we could maybe set up with an Upkeep Gaze again. And our opponent concedes. Guess they don't have enough answers to Delver of Secrets. The green-white deck pretty light on removal. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, keepable hands. I think I'm playing a Vision Tapped. Turn to planning and then we'll see how we want to sequence our Demilich. Up against another aggro deck it looks like. And then we'll take the land. Turn to Alchemist, so looks like more of a mono red as opposed to goblins. Okay. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to play double Demilich. Um, so probably just fading hope at the Alchemist before they get to untap with it. And then a Delver. It's a little bit awkward because I would prefer to just play a couple of my 4-drops, so I'm not going to be able to squeeze Delver into my curve. Double Javelin here. And then... Any one mana instant is fine, so Graveyard Island, keep Fading Hope. And then I can bounce Alchemists, still play Demilich. And now I guess I'll keep another one mana instant or land on top, consider will do. If Demilich survives, it should be pretty easy to uh, play the second one next turn for maybe just two mana. Could uh, maybe Fading Hope, Scry, and then consider to also try and hit a land drop so I can also play Delver of Secrets. All right, so I think that's the plan. Bounce an Alchemist. And then land I'll keep. And 
And there we go. And then a nice leftover here to steal an alchemist, perhaps. I imagine they've got some burn spells, but they haven't fired off any of them yet. So maybe they're waiting to untap with both alchemists before they do. Javelinier is attacking. Could try and block with Demilich, forcing a pump spell or burn spell. I think I can afford to take one. And we even get to transform our Delver. All right, so attack with a team. And then I'm interested in probably a Consider and a Fading Hope. And then I want to resolve the Fading Hope first, so I'll click on Consider first. That way I get to Scry before drawing, because I wouldn't mind an extra land for Tempted. It's going to force the issue on Alchemists. And land will keep on top. Alright. Don't really see my opponent coming back from this, unless they've got a sweeper. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a pretty clunky hand, with a lot of 4 mana plays, so I don't love it, but still gonna keep. And then, don't think I'm holding gaze until turn 4, so I'm just gonna play it right away, maybe look for a Delver or... Some more cantrips to fuel Serpentine Curve. Don't think I want Jory Disruption, although it is something I can hold up on turn 2, I guess. Sure. I'll keep one. And then, if the opponent plays into it, great. If not, can flashback Gaze, and then maybe play Tapped turn 2. All right, double Demilich. Let's put those in the graveyard. So I have land for guaranteed. So I'll just play this tapped and keep up disruption for one more turn. And then currently cannot play Demilich out of the graveyard, but can play the one from my hand. Counter the curse. So put on black red. And if they kill Demilich, we'll go for a Serpentine Curve. Maybe we've picked up another 1-mana Cantrip in the meantime, Fading Hope instead. Could also upkeep Gaze, which would still let me play Demilich potentially. Cube. Let's bounce in response to the trigger, so we don't lose our token to begin with. And then, now I should be able to, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I can replay Demilich, but I can still gaze and play Demilich. So I'll do that in upkeep to change my draw, potentially. Bunch of Delvers I don't think are going to be great in this matchup, so let's graveyard everything. And draw. And then Curate, I could still play if I find a land with it, and then I can play 2 mana Demilich. Let's try it. Alright, so Graveyard Gaze, draw the land, and play Demilich.
And then the counter spells definitely go. And then probably keep gaze over curates. Because I can at least flash it back if they kill my demi lich. Hit for five. It's gonna be shambling ghasts into village rights. So they can still play the cube afterwards if they play land. Alrighty, so could steal the eye twitch. And then I could still cast a gaze for one mana as opposed to two. Could make another serpentine curve. Opponent could be playing Blood on the Snow, which is maybe what they're setting up. But if I steal Eye Twitch and they kill it, I still get to learn since we have a sideboard for that. So I think stealing Eye Twitch is fine. And then I'll cast my Free Gaze. I don't think I have enough to replay another Demilich, do I? Not quite. So, play Gaze. And it's probably Graveyard everything. Just to have more fuel for Demilich. Don't care about Delver too much. And then I could play another Demilich, I suppose. Yeah, it's... A little painful if they have blood on the snow. If they just play gelatinous cube. I also wouldn't have lethal if I don't play another Demilich, so maybe it's still worth it. And then we'll have to exile everything. So empty graveyards, but a nice board presence. And if the Eye Twitch dies, I can still learn for all sorts of lessons. So it's just going to be a Shambling Ghasts into another Village Rites. I wonder if our opponent's playing more than the two Curses. They probably have a third color in there, but uh, yeah, they couldn't find it in time. Sweet, so yeah, we got to see our Mono Blue Damage deck do its thing. And I've got to say I was quite impressed by the performance of both Damage and Delver of Secrets. Being able to steal games, especially against more controlling decks that might be sitting back on counter spells or trying to resolve expensive sorceries, which we can potentially counter on the cheap. So this is a very unique deck, playing some underused cards to good effect, I think. So that's always a great recipe. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.